and laughed. So I've been laughing since 2012, really laughing since 2020. And it changed everything for me, oddly. It just changed everything. It got me out of my head where I was, when somebody said, ooh, worms in the house, a part of me took it personal. Like they're saying, ooh, Kathy, you're gross, or, you know, something about me that it was, and, and laughter allowed me to realize that that's their stuff. That's not on me. They're, they're not ready for what I'm offering. That's okay. And I was able to just become more resilient. I still have my, my important mission, but now I have a second one because in 2020, the world shut down Mm -hmm. and we got isolated, you know? Yeah. So, so now I'm, that's my second mission. And I kind of thought we were given one mission in life. (laughs) (laughs) There's many missions. Welcome to the Audacious Living Podcast, hosted by my man, Audley Stevenson, the odd man. Well, greetings and salutations. Welcome to the Audacious Living Podcast, where our mission is to help you live your best audacious life ever. Totally thrilled to have you join us on the podcast, and I truly appreciate you taking time out of your day, out of especially your busy schedule, to be here. Together, we're going to explore expiring stories, innovative ideas, and practical tips to help you infuse more boldness and joy into your life. Think of laughter as the oil that keeps the machinery of life running smoothly. Just as oil reduces friction and wear, laughter eases stress and tension, keeping our minds and bodies in optimal condition. In today's episode, we'll dive into the transformative power of laughter with our special guest, Kathy Nesbitt. Kathy is an innovative entrepreneur known as the Crawley Laughing Bean Queen. Uh, she'll tell about, she'll explain that a bit more. Uh, with over 22 years, years of experience in uh, vermicomposting, Kathy has expanded her mission to include promoting health and wellness through laughter, yoga. Uh, She's passionate about simple solutions for today's challenges, from indoor composting to harnessing the power of laughter. Kathy's journey from composting to laughter yoga highlights the profound impact it can have on our lives. Our expertise in laughter yoga offers a unique perspective on how intentional laughter exercises can enhance our well-being and help us cope with stress. So now that we're ready to go, and I hope you're ready to laugh, let's go. Hey, Kathy, thank you for joining me here today on the Audacious Living Podcast. I appreciate you making the time like this. I'm happy to be here. I'm feeling yeah. audacious today. Yeah, why not, man? What a great, it's a great place to be, great place to be, I should say, right? That audacious feeling. So thank you. And um, I, had a pre- and I also say, you know, we've been, we were juggling back and forth to get this date lined up and all those of life mishaps and circumstances changes. So I'm really glad that we're finally here. Everything that happened before doesn't matter no more because uh, we're here. So thank you for your your patience through this process. Um, we uh, so 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 uh, we're, we're going to talk about laughter, uh, I think, and there, there may be a lot of that as well too. But um, I'm a big fan of it. Like I enjoy having I enjoy having a good time and fun, and 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 uh, I think we sometimes forget the all the the wonderful things that come along. Uh, with laughter, including the, the health benefits for sure, the impact it has on others, the, the way we can positive impact the environment. Um, so m- maybe as a starting point, Kathy, before we get in all that good stuff, uh, you can fill our audience in about you know who you are, the work you do, and, and what got you to this point. Beautiful. Thank you. Oh, I'm so excited for this conversation. Thank you. So my working title is Kathy Crawley Laughing Bean Queen. (laughs) I offer simple solutions for today's challenges, worms for indoor composting, sprouts for eating, grow your own, and laughter for overall health and wellness. It's the 22nd anniversary of Kathy's Crawley Composters. Wow. Wow, Thank you. Selling worms by the... Right? Selling worms by the pound for indoor composting. Like, who doesn't want worms in the house? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know you're know, you divinely guided when you, when you choose a business or a business chooses you that, mm. um, like, who would want what you have? That's when you know that, oh, gosh, I must be on purpose. Because yeah. I knew that people needed what I had. I didn't know before starting my business that people don't buy what they need. They buy what they want. And they didn't want what I had. <laughs> they didn't want any part of it, but they needed right. it. 
So I, so I, um, at the beginning, like many entrepreneurs, when I would meet people, I would be like, oh, you need this. And they're like, what, what's happening here? And I'm, you know, I'm animated. I'm fun. I'm so it probably was fun to watch me, but thinking there's no way I'm getting worm. So I don't have to worry about saying yes to her offer because <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Yeah. I have a psych degree. So I realized early on that people were afraid of what I had, like that people might have been traumatized as a child after a rainy day or a fishing incident. Something ha might have happened with worms. So if, if you're traumatized as a child, you're not looking to that as a solution. This is indoor composting. So uh, we're in Canada. I'm, I'm just north of Toronto. And in 2002, the landfill for the greater Toronto area closed. And yeah. we started to export our garbage to the United States. And this was a solution. And that's why I felt like I was on, I, I still feel like I'm on purpose with that mission. It's it, it was a challenge. So for 10 years, I was out there at all the events, wherever I could have a table, I would have a table. When I could speak, I would speak and say my my message. In 2012, one more person said, ew, worms in the house. And I questioned everything. Although I'd heard it many times, I, I guess I didn't really hear it because I wasn't listening. Right. <laughs> I was like, no, 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 you need this. Uh, 2012, and I questioned everything. Oh my gosh, my whole world came crumbling down. And I, I, I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do. 10 years I've been at this, doing my mm -hmm. best, mm -hmm. working hard you know, shouting from the rooftops, you need to have this. Why don't people know about this? And why don't they want what I have? And I, I, I act very fast. I get an idea. I want it to come to, to life right away. And I started to question why I was doing what I was doing. So the universe sent help. The very next day I was introduced to laughter yoga and laughed. So I've been laughing since 2012, really laughing since 2020. Yeah. And it changed everything for me, oddly. It just changed everything. It got me out of my head where I was, when somebody said, ooh, worms in the house, a part of me took it personal. Like they're saying, ooh, Kathy, you're gross, or, you know, something about me that it was, and, and laughter allowed me to realize that that's their stuff. That's not on me. They're, they're not ready for what I'm offering. That's okay. And I was able to just become more resilient. I still have my my important mission, but now I have a second one because in 2020, the world shut down mm -hmm. and we got isolated, you know? Yes. Yeah. So, so now I'm, that's my second mission. And I kind of thought we were given one mission in life. Right, right. <laughs> There's many missions. Got you. I'm cu curious, Kathy, how frequently or how often did you laugh prior to making this your full-time mission what was that what was what was Kathy like before I guess is my question um I you know I'm a I'm a natural laugher mm -hmm. Bef before laughter yoga um I would tap down my laughter I'm a big laugher so I'm when I'm laughing everyone knows it okay. I'm big I'm, and people know those people <laughs> like, sure, he's like sure oh they're, they're laughing so loud <laughs> <laughs> laughter yoga gave me permission to laugh loud laugh big be you know get noticed um because that's that's what we need. And so, yeah. So before before laughter yoga, I was a, a big laugher, but it, but I tamped it down and I wasn't laughing every day with intention, laughing on purpose. So why did you tone it down? Like, was there something like what was like there's something that's oppressing you? Like you just didn't think it was appropriate or I'm curious, actually. As you... mm -hmm. Yes, I think it was part of the people pleaser in me. Like I didn't want, you know, I didn't want to be. I want people to like me. So I didn't want them to, to think, oh, why is she laughing all the time? What's the matter with her? And when you're laughing and you're you're upbeat and you're high energy, um, sometimes people will label you as flight, you know, an airhead or flighty or, you know, that you're not serious. That it's because I have this serious mission. Laughter has it, it's like I'm grounded in the earth with the worms and then I'm laughing up here. It's the vibration of the gods. It's high vibration magic medicine. So I kind of have heaven and earth connected with my two missions. Got you, got you. So may, maybe uh, for, for our audience, if you could describe what laughter yoga is and what that looks like and what's involved, just to get a picture of, of what we're talking about here. Laughter yoga is not doing yoga and laughing. 
Okay. It's laughing as an exercise. Started in 1995 by a medical medical doctor, Dr. Madan Kateria, and his goal is world peace. Oh, we need this more than ever. There's so many things going on in the world. We need this more than ever. Laughter is the opposite of stress. So there's little games. So the yoga part of laughter yoga is the practice of the laughter okay. and the deep diaphragmatic breathing. When we're laughing, we're we're moving our diaphragm. So it's like internal jogging. It's not jokes or comedy because jokes can be cultural, like about somebody, two people going somewhere. It's not funny for them. Right. So this is uh, little games. So there's clapping. So when you're clapping, you're clapping palm to palm. And the rhythm is one, two, one, two, three. The words are ho, ho, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> and I, when I started laughter yoga, I thought this part was so strange. Because it's a cardiovascular workout, you do some deep breathing at the beginning, you do some gentle warm ups, and then you get into the actually deep belly laughter. And I thought this part was so strange. Like, what is this part? Because I'm a natural laugher. I don't need priming. Okay. But this right. primes the people that are, you know, in their heads, the log the logical people who think about everything might think, oh, laughter. Is how can I laugh without jokes? So this gives them something to do with their hands. Okay. Like they can go, ho, ho, ha, ha, ha. Everybody's playing. So as, they're and as they're clapping from side to side, this is what the... Right. So everybody's doing it. Everybody's you're making eye contact. You're you're looking at each other. You're doing the ho, ho, ha, ha, ha. And that says to our brain, oh, I must be happy. I'm doing the happy dance <laughs> and I'm smiling. Right. As soon as we start smiling, we send a note to our brain. Hey, I'm smiling. I, I must be happy. So we can trick our brain. Our body doesn't know the difference between real and simulated laughter. So as soon as we go, ha, 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 ha. It sounds fake. It, that was fake. It was just sure. simulated. Right. It, it doesn't matter. Our brain's like, oh, happy time. And we start secreting the, lo the love drugs. Dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and endorphins. Have you had your daily dose? <laughs> oh, that's it. Okay. So dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin. And endorphins. Endorphins. There we go. Oh, wow. Dose. D-O-S-C. Oh, look at that. I like that. Clever, right? Yes. I'm sure I didn't come up with that. I'm sure I took that from someone else. <laughs> and that's okay. That's okay, right? <laughs> Absolutely. So it, that's when I said it was the opposite of stress. I mean it. When mm. we're stressed, we're secreting cortisol, adrenaline. We're in charge of our own pharma. We're in charge gotcha. of our own pharma. We get to decide, are we going to be stressed today? Or we're going to be in a joyful state. We get to, we can't be in both, not at the same time. Right, right. And stress is a habit. I want people to understand that, oh, when we're feeling all this stress, it's a habit. We wake up and we're like, oh, what can I be stressed about today? Instead of going, hey, like the opposite, you know, our brain is geared to negative. So when we hear, if we're tuned into the news, mm -hmm. right? I don't know when the last time you heard the news and you were like, all right, I'm all revved up. I'm going to go celebrate. Something good is happening. In the no, it's like drag dragging it down. Oh, my gosh. And we're globally collect connected now. So we hear everything. We hear all the bad news. We yes, we do. It's it's funny in your, in, your, in, your, in your reference to the news. I find it very interesting that absolutely the, the worst things are what we see first. But usually if you stick around at the end of the telecast, all the feel good stories, you know, they found, you know, baby birds were hatched in some, you know, diverse place or the baby panda was born today or something very cute and makes you feel good. But I come to the very, very, very end of it, of, of the telecast usually. Right. Yes. So, I, you know, same with social media is really designed to keep us on there to engage yes. us. Mm -hmm. And and when, how do you get engaged? By showing people things that they don't have. So so then we have envy or jealousy or you know or the opposite where somebody posts something that you is so opposite to your view yep. and you get all enraged like ah oh, how could somebody think that you start to compose a message like you might not even know that person in person. Like for real, they they're just your Facebook friend, which I don't mean just, there's still connection but you know, who cares if everybody doesn't think like you? Right, right. Yep, yep. Um, I wonder, uh, just just for our, our, our listeners, and, and I'm not, you don't need to get a, a very technical 
uh, overly technical explanation, but when we talk about some of the, uh, the, the, the positive things that are released, uh, the, the daily dose, if you will. I wonder if you could just fill our audience in on what these things actually do for us, maybe starting with, um, uh, the, again, the dose <laughs> acronym. Yeah, so these are the love drugs, the happy chemicals. Sometimes people will drink or they do drugs or they eat their favorite foods or they have sex or whatever you're doing. Mm -hmm. This is all to, for, the, for that hit, for the dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin. And they have different ones, different um, things. Oxytocin is, is the bonding chemical. Whenever we hug somebody, we're secreting oxytocin. Okay. And we can even hug ourselves and start oh. secreting oxytocin. Um, you know, it, yeah, so so we can, rather than looking at outside factors, we can internally start secreting these um, chemicals. It's really magic. And, uh, you know, I think the most important piece of laughter yoga is the oxygen. Mm. Our brain requires 25% more oxygen than the rest of our body as an operating principle, right? It's a machine, yes. Yes. the answering machine. So when we're stressed, we're not breathing properly. Mm. Our body's not get it, what, getting what it needs. For sure, our brain isn't. Like ever lost your keys and you're flapping around, ah, where I gotta go, where are my keys? Um, as long as you're flapping around, like getting stressed about where your keys are, your brain is literally being deprived of oxygen. It cannot help you. It knows where they are. <laughs> so you need to stop and take a deep breath. So I can't prevent you from losing something. Sorry, how Canadian. <laughs> right, right. But I can offer a tip. So next time you're flapping around, whatever you've misplaced, mm -hmm. and you're flapping around looking for it, stop, no. take a nice deep breath in, laugh it off, <laughs> apologize to all the people you yelled at, and then your phone, keys, glasses, whatever it is, will be right there. You'll find them. It, it, it's so funny that you say that because it's so, so true. If you take a moment and just allow, um, well, I often I, I reference time, right? But it like, just gives things some time. But certainly, you know, just filling that time with some laughter uh, is, is not a bad thing. Um, it's actually a good thing. It's I, I, I might think be more conscious about that. But you're, you're, you're right. It does, it, when, when you're in, a, and, and I'm very glad you guys sort of talked about the brain needing oxygen and and because you are you're correct that when we we are stressed we're not breathing properly here you know take a deep breath deep breath because we want to get that brain to our oxygen so we can think better because it is very very much a machine and and i think i mean one of the things so, so you know every time i i, I get in these you know conversations I'm very you know blessed and appreciative of the insights that come out of it and, and right off the bat you know the, the whole idea of making that connection uh from laughter to what it can do for our brain health is just that's that's the thing that resonates with me big time already yes um and and just to be heavy for a minute mm -hmm. um and then we'll lighten it up because it's laughter <laughs> it's a laughter chat people are really struggling today yes everybody uh, uh, you know since 2020 i i have a psych degree so i'm i'm always questioned like i love thinking about people and why they do what they do. And I've just keep asking myself who, which demographic was most harmed during that lockdown. Mm -hmm. um, there's no answer because it's, it's individual. Everybody, I think, I believe that everybody was damaged on a certain level. Yes. I was uh, on the weekend, I was in a Tony Robbins event and they had a, they were doing a little bit of a fundraiser for a hospital. Yeah. They had the CEO of the hospital come and he said in 2018, uh, the whole of 2018, 62 people, children came in with uh, suicidal ideation, 62 in the whole year of 2018, 2024, they averaged seven a day, wow. children under tw like average age 12, which means there's many under 12 and, and some mm -hmm. over 12. Mm -hmm seven a day so they're averaging in a week more than they got in a whole year like one is too many i get it um so there's a real need for us to look after not just the children you know i i often yes. wonder when do children become you know oh that that teenager that why don't they get a job why don't they do and we start judging them but as children they're like look at how cute they are they're so cute and we want to do everything for them. When do, I, I always wonder, when is that line where we go, look at that guy, what a bum. You know, like, when did they go from being that cute little kid 
to now they're a burden. And how did we allow that to happen as society? That's my question is, this is on all of us and we all are in this together. We are all one. We need to stop judging the other and and reach out a hand like, how can I help you? What do you need today? And anybody that's struggling and you think, how can I help somebody else? If you're struggling, I would say, go and help somebody else. Right, right. Yeah. Now, th- th- those are so powerful and, and, and thought provoking in terms of sort of the impact uh, that time was, you know, again, we know the pandemic was a, was a difficult time for everyone. We all were impacted the exact same way, going through the exact same thing and, and not fully, I don't think we fully recognized or understood. I mean, hey, this podcast came out of the pandemic, right? And so mm. it was the same kind of thing where there was this void, there was this something going on and I wanted to fill it. So I said, hey, let me start podcasting. Well, things are important to me. So I, 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 I'm, I'm with you wholeheartedly. For, for, the, for those that, because um, for some, right, laughter will come easier than others, right? Mm. Uh, some, so there are so those who are more, more prone to it. Um, I, I guess the, how do you adopt that? Or how do you make that more a way of your being in terms of, you know, adopting laugh into your regular operation? You decide. You make the decision that it's important enough to do it. Mm-hmm. People will go to the gym, they go. And, you know, another piece is that people don't put themselves first. Okay. We need to put ourselves first. Like, if you're an entrepreneur, it's a busy life. You're yes. going all the time. You're here, you're there, you're hustling all the time. And I hear from entrepreneurs very often that, oh, I don't have time to go to the gym. I don't have time to do that. Right. I don't have time to go for a walk. We need to put that first. That needs to be what we do first so that we can look after ourselves, and then we're more present. Imagine if we looked after ourselves, and then we came to our business fully present. We've already done our exercise. We've done our meditation, our deep breathing, whatever it is that we do. And then we're ready to start the day. I have a laughter buddy. Mm-hmm. Uh, December 2021, we started. We laugh for two minutes full on. She calls me at 730 in the morning. She's in New Brunswick, so she's in another province. Yeah, yeah. We laugh for two. I don't say hello. I I know it's her. I start laughing. Two minutes, one minute of deep breathing, and then two, two more minutes. Five minute practice changes everything. And she was away for. She went on one of those lifetime trips. Three okay. weeks she was away. First day, uh-huh. no big deal. Second yep. day, okay. By the third day, I was like, I feel different. Mm. Something's happening. I and I noticed. I was like, oh oh my gosh, I'm not laughing doing my five minutes in the morning. It's, yeah. It matters. Right. So it's what, what it does, it just jump starts my morning. Instead of yeah. starting like listening to the news, of course, I don't even listen to the news. So right, right, that's yeah. a whole different thing. But I definitely, if, if people are, are news watchers or listeners, don't listen first thing. Like don't start your day with bad news. Come on. Mm-hmm. And don't end your day with bad news. Stop right. it. Right. right. Like, okay, get your news in there if you must. Um, so starting your day with, with a giggle, like even if it's a cardiovascular, ex- whatever it is, like laughter is just really easy and doesn't cost anything. Right. right. <laughs> and it's in us, right? You don't need any special equipment or practice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is a practice, by the way. <laughs> yeah. uh, what it does. Not an it, ongoing one, an ongoing one. It is. Yes. Yeah. So it it oxygenates my beautiful body. My every morning, my body's having a party. And as I'm laughing every morning, I say, I love this. Mm -hmm. I I love it so much. And so we're on the phone. I have it on speakerphone. I'm usually outside. And I think I I kind of get in my head and I'm laughing and I just think it's so funny because if people, my neighbors don't know that I'm on the phone, and they can't ha- hear my friend laughing. Yep. It, it must be like, what is, now what's that cuckoo lady doing? You know, she's got worms and she laughs. What, <laughs> what is happening with her? <laughs> I, 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 my, my goal now is to help people just be the person that they're meant to be. Like, why are we always wanting to be like the other person? We need to just be like us. Mm-hmm. There's no one else like us. We're the only one. Right. Yeah, Absolutely. I love it. I love it. So the, the 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 business world and corporations are recognizing the the benefits of laughing. Wonder if you could talk a little bit about that. Sure, could. Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah. Once we went back in the office, it became stressful. Mm-hmm. People have forgotten how to make eye contact and have the conversation. 
Um, yeah, even on the phone, it's it's a challenge. So what laughter does for a corporation, it breaks down barriers. The CEO and the person in the warehouse or the mail clerk or whatever, they're equal at a laughter club. Everybody just laughing together. It's Yeah, so it's not about titles. We're just laughing, getting oxygenated. It opens up your brain so you can come up with more creative solutions, right? When we're stressed, our, our frontal lobe is shut off. So it helps us to get out of situations and it connects people. It, it It's better. It's great for team building, it boosts immunity. So people are um, sick less often, meaning they're more productive at work. It increases the bottom line. There are so many benefits to incorporating laughter, a laughter wellness program in corporate. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, how quickly can you those results be seen or, or realized? In an instant. Wow. It changes everything in an instant. And that, you know, the people that are in their head mm -hmm. thinking, oh my God, I could not, blah, 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 blah. whatever the <laughs> thoughts are, right? They're the ones, if once we can get, once we break them, or <laughs> that sounds harsh, once we get through to those folks. Right. They're our biggest advocate because they're like, mm -hmm. I was a skeptic. I have a video on my, on my, um, on my, uh, a testimonial from a young man. Mm -hmm. This was beautiful back in 2020. Um, he was a student, an engineering student at U of Waterloo. Mm -hmm. And he contacted me. I have a worm business. So he contacted me and said, my, me and my buddies are wanting to start a worm operation, a large scale. And we want to have a meeting can we will you meet with us this was on a monday i have a free laughter club on tuesday so i was like hmm <laughs> so i wrote back and said sure we can meet i have a laughter club on tuesdays why don't you come to my laughter club all three of you yes mm -hmm. and if you have the energy at the end if you're not too tired <laughs> we'll meet after <laughs> right. 18 year olds <laughs> yeah, yeah. they came all three of them and anyway we had our meeting everything was great two of them came for a long time the third one dropped away. That's fine. Two of them came. I mean, they were doing meditation. Imagine at 18 doing meditation, mm, wow. Wim Hof breathing. Come on. I was like, yeah. ah, at 18, I wasn't doing any of those things. Like, good for you guys. And the one guy, he he did a testimonial for me, Madav, saying that when he came, it was like awkward. He's an introvert. He didn't know that he'd be able to laugh. And he looked forward to his Tuesdays. He's no longer coming, but... Um, I think of him often thinking how, how it changed, you know, it was a little bit stressful time and you're, it's stressful at university, especially, well, not, not especially engineering where it's maybe hands-on or you got to like work together as a team. It's really challenging, can be challenging online. And anyway, this testimony. So I broke through to him and, and he just loved it. It just like, and you could see week to week, he was just becoming more, I do a part where we dance Mm -hmm. And that might be weird for people who are like, what? Everyone can dance. It's just moving your body, right? It's right, just like, right. it's not a big, it's not like you're we're on a contest. No, it's, we're just like moving our body. That's it. Yes, yes. We're moving. And you could see like, as the weeks went on, he, he would move his body more. He was just getting more comfortable. And that's all it is. It's getting out of our head into our body. Mm -hmm. When we're laughing, yes. right? We're secreting all the love drugs. Yep. Pew, pew, pew. As soon as we smile and then we giggle. <laughs> Right. Pew, pew, pew. We giggle louder. <laughs> pew, right. pew, pew. Like, I wonder, am I, am I going to wear out my dispenser? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, yeah, I can see that, right? <laughs> but the same is opposite. Like, the same is right. true. Like, if people right. are perpetually stressed, what's going to happen? They're going to get sick. Something's going to happen because their body's not functioning properly. Right? We have the two. We have parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous systems. We can't be in both. Right. When we're in stress, we're in sympathetic. When we're laughing, when we're relaxed and joyful, we're in uh, parasympathetic. Yes. Our body is, when we're, I, I recently learned, since 2020, I've taken a deep dive into why laughter is the best medicine. Mm -hmm. And I learned that the body uses 80 to 90% of our energy digesting. So when we're stressed, some people will stress eat, but I, I'm, I'm, suggesting not to do that because our body's not taking in the nutrients of, of course it goes in and comes out but it doesn't it, our body's not digesting it's just 
in fight flight or freeze mm -hmm. so we're not we're not we're, we're doing a disservice to our body when we're in a perpetual state of stress right right wow it's it, it's certainly enlightening uh certainly informative and I, I i guess what people will connect to right away when they can see the benefits right off the bat how important that is we talk about health benefits and and all you know, the wonderful love drugs that get released um you know they, they can have powerful impacts it makes you wonder why anyone wouldn't want to have or be a part of a laughter club. <laughs> it's the belief that, uh, you know, when I talk to people about being a laughter leader, they, oh, I laugh all the time. Maybe you do, but do you laugh full on? Like for, uh, you know, if you're watching a comedy, if you're laughing, you're going to miss the next line. If you're at right. a comedy club, you're going to get kicked out. They're going to be like, ma'am, okay, the joke's over. And, you know, people... I, I, I'm, I'm in Bradford and I ride my bike. That's my second favorite thing is uh, riding my bike. And I don't wear earbuds or anything. I want to hear everything. I want to, I want to know if a car is coming, by the way. <laughs> it's called being I, present. <laughs> <laughs> right? It is. And yeah. so I combine my bike riding with laughter yoga. And <laughs> so okay. I'm laughing and riding. It's, I mean, it's odd, but it's, it's part of my brand now. <laughs> One day there was a gentleman um, with his granddaughter, a man with his granddaughter, at, at uh, standing on a bridge. And so I stopped, I talked to everyone, I get off my bike and I'm approaching, I'm, I'm, I'm an empath like most entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And as I was, was approaching, I could feel that he was uncomfortable that I was approaching. So I, I stayed, kept my distance. I just said, oh, have a great day. I got back on my bike and I left. A couple of days later, I saw that same man by himself and I was standing on, on the bridge. So he came, he walked up to me and we started talking and he said, you know, when people see people laughing by themselves, they think there's something wrong with them. And I started laughing. Ah, oh, I know. <laughs> and we continued chatting. I get on my bike. I came back home. It wasn't until I walked into the living room that I, that I realized, oh, he was talking about me. Right. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't even know. I was like, right. oh yes, I, I know. I understand. But that's our society. We think there's something wrong with people because they're laughing. What what's the matter mm. with us? Mm. They're, 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 it's almost like a, a a fear of looking weird or looking different or, and 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 I really think that for those who uh, are okay with laughing out loud or laughing out as a way of expressing, how would they choose to do it? They're the ones that are most comfortable with themselves. They are, and people want to be with those people. Mm. when you're in a crowd and you see people laughing you're always what are they laughing what are those sure. people doing what you're what's happening over correct. there what am i missing you're absolutely correct yeah, yeah. we want to be in yeah. it that's absolutely right and so if you want to be part of that and and as long as you're okay with the as long, well as long as you don't care about how it looks it's not you know that's not a pervasive thought in your mind oh my gosh people are going to think this then you know i think those are the individuals that will embrace this idea of laughing out loud whenever you feel like it as often as you can <laughs> Right. Nobody's going to be talking about you later. Like, oh, there was this this lady laughing and laughing like they might be, which is great if they are, because that means they noticed. Um, it's it's like remember in the at the high school dance, you know, nobody would dance. And then when somebody gets up and dance or at the wedding, yeah. like everyone's yeah. waiting, everyone wants to to dance. But nobody like, oh, I don't want to be the first one. Like, if right. be the first one. Right. Why not be the first right. one? Right, Nobody's right. going to remember. Oh, remember, she was she's always the one dancing first. No one's saying that they're going to be like, wow, I wow, I wish that could be me. It can be. And 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 and, and that's where the audaciousness comes in, right? Like be audacious enough to take that first step and be OK with laughing and be the first one to laugh. And uh, that's how you, you you can have a positive impact and make a difference. It is. It is. Be your own person. Like just I love it. if you want to laugh, laugh. If you. Yeah. So, I mean just become present. We need to stop worrying about what are they talking about? What, what, what everyone talking about me? They're not, they're not like, look at the things that go on with the, these famous people and they have these scandals. They're still out there walking around. Sure. Sure. <laughs> sure. You know, it's funny. Like, even if you, you like, you just gave the, the example of say, you know, someone, uh, you know, saw, saw you laughing or saw a group of people laughing and they were to go home and talk to their other people or their friends and go, Oh, I saw this person laughing. It was a, you know, and again, I've, I've got nothing to prove or validate this, but you know, my guess is the people that are hearing that story, someone would laugh. 
So right? Like, oh, wow. Right? Like, not, I, 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 I do not believe that all 10, 15, 20 people, whoever they're telling the story to, would all go, yeah, you're right. That is weird. You will have people that who are naturally going to, oh, that is funny. They're just laughing for no reason. Ha, ha, ha. Right? Exactly. Uh, one day I was on my bike ride. I usually go in the morning, but it was when the high school and I go by the high school when the high school was out for lunch. Yep. And so I was at the light and there was like all the masses of, of uh, the high school kids. And I was like, how am I going to get through? And my bell clearly isn't loud enough. Nobody can hear yeah. my bell. I know everyone's got earbuds, so they can't hear my little sure. ding, ding, ding. So I'm yeah. ringing my bell and I'm going ding, ding, ding. Ha ha ha. And I'm I'm laughing. And these I think it was like five or six guys were at the other side of the street and they're like looking because I'm like laughing ah, ha, ha, like this old lady laughing on her bike ah, ha, 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 ha. and they're looking at me like like I was cuckoo then they started laughing I know they were laughing at and that's okay with me it's laughter sure. so if they're laughing they're laughing it's it's all good and I and I was gonna you know stop and say I'm a laughter teacher and then I was like no, that that's uh, let that one just stay because they're just laughing, thinking sh that I was cuckoo, yes. and all is well. And I and then but and I had this moment where I thought, oh my gosh, we all had people when we were young, older people like old older lady or old man who we thought was a little bit cuckoo. They were a little yep. bit on the fringe doing yep. some cuckoo thing. Like, what are they doing in their yard now? What Now what are they up to? Yep. Yep. That's yep. me now. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm the one. I'm the one that the young people are going. Ooh. I love it. <laughs> I love it. And That's right, awesome. I want people to be like me. Like, just, just be yourself. Just do whatever you need to do. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Kathy, this is, this, this is, first of all, thank you for doing this. This has just been so, so awesome. And I, I think that your, your insight, insights are, are, are bang on and, and so relevant uh, in terms of how uh, they can assist us on our journey or on our audacious journey. So thank you for doing this. Uh, for listeners that wanted to learn more about you or connect with you directly, where, where can we send them? Yes. So uh, my my laughter page is Kathy's club dot com. Kathy with a C. Mm -hmm. And I have a free Tuesday club on Zoom. It's th it's 30 minutes of super fun self-care. I incorporate tapping brain gym Qigong. I really just want people to get out of stress and into joy because when we feel good, we do good. I love it. I love it. Kathy, this has been absolutely wonderful. Thank you for the time. All the best. Thank you. I look forward to meeting you in person. Cool. Let me just stop that. Stop recording. How was that? That felt good. Yeah, that was good. That was really good. I enjoyed it. I didn't that. mean to be heavy, but I just uh, I just learned no, that no. about the suicides. And I was like, oh my gosh, imagine that. Back we are here in the podcast, Kathy, it was so much fun. And, you know, we explored the idea that laughter is the, the opposite of stress. You know, Kathy shared how laughter yoga, a practice combining laughter exercises with deep breathing, help us release the love drugs, uh, dopamine, the oxytonin, the serotonin, and the endorphins. These chemicals boost our mood and create a joyful state, allowing us to manage stress better and improve our overall health. By choosing laughter, we take control of our personal pharmacy and, de and that's how, how we decide to live in joy rather than in stress. To learn more about Kathy and her inspiring work, be sure to check out the contact details in the show notes below. Uh, I'd encourage you to connect with her directly to explore yeah, laughter yoga and how it can transform your life. Uh, thank you so much again for tuning into another edition of the Audacious Living Podcast. Uh, it's so, so much appreciated. We had an opportunity to laugh together, and that was a lot of fun. Uh, but as always, I appreciate you, and I got to simply ask if you could like, follow, subscribe, or share if you haven't already done so, because, of course, your support helps us continue to grow and bring you more even inspiring episodes and content. So uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Until next time, stay safe, be kind, show love to one another, and be audacious. You've been listening to the Audacious Living Podcast, hosted by...